Ever wonder what tricks a Commodore 64 would be capable of if it weren't constrained by 64K of RAM? Well stick around because we're going to find out. When the Commodore 64 first debuted in 1982, 64K was a lot of memory, especially considering the machine's low price point. Consider that the VIC-20 only had 5K of RAM and came out only two years earlier. We know that the 64 had the magic combination of hardware to become a runaway success and amass a tremendous library of software, but what would have been possible if an otherwise unmodified 64 had access to next generation levels of memory? With a 16-bit address bus, the 6510 CPU can only directly access 65,536 bytes of memory. The system has no dedicated memory management unit, so how is it able to access more RAM than it was originally equipped with? Commodore addressed this when they introduced their line of official RAM expansion units, or REUs. These devices contain a MOS 8726 RAM expansion controller chip that provides the logic to select from multiple banks of external memory, the contents of which can then be copied to main memory where it can be accessed by the CPU. The architecture allows access to 24 bits worth of REU address space, which works out to a maximum of 16 megabytes, or 256 times the base system's RAM. REU data can be transferred quickly using DMA, which requires only one CPU cycle per byte. This, in theory, can yield transfer rates approaching one megabyte per second. In the Commodore 128 bit, I demonstrated how quickly GEOS can load when pre-positioned on an REU. I also showed some of the graphics demos that came bundled on Commodore's REU utility disk that run on period correct hardware with no other expansion. These programs display some pretty fancy animations, including one that mimics the famous Amiga Boing Ball demo. Instead of being rendered in real time, however, there's a bit of smoke and mirrors involved. In reality, these demos either load each frame from disk or pre-render each frame one at a time and store them on the REU for later playback. This first example is a remake of one such official Commodore REU demo. Updated with a better color palette, background music, and scrolling text, this demo by CRT was released at World of Commodore 2016. Like its predecessors, it pre-renders each frame into the REU and then plays them back at high speed. It'll work with expansions as small as 128K, but for the best experience, a 512K REU is recommended. The next couple of demos require an upgraded REU. The largest expansion originally sold by Commodore was only 512 kilobytes due to the high cost of RAM, but in later years the community found ways to modify the units to accept more, often 1 or 2 megabytes. While the full 16 megabyte limit could be achieved using period correct hardware, such as a CMD RAM link, it's much easier today when using emulation or a modern cartridge such as the Turbo Chameleon or the 1541 Ultimate 2. One possibility that this large amount of high-speed storage opens up is full motion video. A standardized format and encoder called NUVI was developed by the group Crest way back in 2011. The format allows for just over one minute of video to be stored at 12.5 frames per second, synchronized with a SID tune. Later demos took advantage of a similar technique as Nuvi, some even adding digital audio sampling to the mix.
Another possibility for an expanded REU is playback of larger, higher quality digital audio than was previously possible. Breadamp is an audio player developed by Doddler TL that allows you to encode your own music into collections. Breadamp supports stereo playback, fast forwarding and rewinding within a track, and samples up to 15 kHz when using an original SID chip. the llama's ass. An alternative method of developing software that breaks through the 64K limit is by utilizing the Easy Flash cartridge format. The original Easy Flash was designed to hold multiple 8 or 16 kilobyte CRT images as well as Ultimax and Ocean Type 1 images. The user could select which image to use from a menu at startup. Additionally, a proprietary Easy Flash format was implemented that could hold a single image up to one megabyte in size. Bank switching was utilized to allow the system to access the larger cartridge formats. With the introduction of Easy Flash 3 in 2010, storage capacity was increased to allow the use of seven one megabyte slots, along with new capabilities such as replacement of kernel ROMs and freezer cart support. As a result of the increased capacity, it became possible to combine entire collections of disk-based software into a single cartridge image. Not only did this add convenience, but the slow loading times of the original software were completely eliminated. This next demo utilizes the Easy Flash format to give us a small taste of the 16-bit Amiga world. Utilizing many of the original graphics assets, Hokuto Force dropped this spectacular Another World intro on the scene in 2019.
You might remember Antonio Savona, who was the developer behind Fixit Felix Jr. that we reviewed in the very first episode of Retro Bits. When he's not creating amazing retro games, Antonio is pushing the limits of the C64's hardware. The 64 SID chip has no capability for playing back digital samples, but early on, a technique was developed to use the CPU to bit bang the chip's volume register in order to play back 4 bit samples. The demo scene later improved on this technique, allowing for higher sampling rates and multiple simultaneous samples. In 2018, Antonio developed software for playing 48 kHz digital audio on an unexpanded C64 with just an Easy Flash card as storage. At this sampling rate, which is higher than an audio CD, the CPU only has 21 clock cycles to retrieve, decompress, and play back each sample. Now that your pictures in the paper be The audio quality is good enough to get me a copyright strike, so I'm going to have to cut it short, but you should definitely check it out for yourself. So that concludes our tour of some of the amazing things the Commodore 64 can do with nothing more than expanded memory. To me, it speaks volumes about how truly special the combination of hardware is in this old machine, and how talented and passionate the enthusiast community is about them. I hope you enjoyed this bit, thank you so much for watching, and I'll leave you with one final amazing example of C64 sorcery captured straight from this bread bin. This track from 2008 is called Fanta in Space, and it plays on a single SID chip on a completely original Commodore 64 without the use of a RAM expansion at all. It uses a novel technique to deliver four separate channels of 8-bit digital audio along with two synthesized voices while also retaining the use of the chip's analog filters. You'd be forgiven for thinking you were hearing an Amiga mod file instead of a SID tune. Truly incredible stuff from the insanely talented developers of the human coding machine in Germany.